Actually, I've been involved in a large PREC um, allocation, uh, but that's finished. And so I'm not going to talk about that. That was about space weather uh, and space physics modeling. Uh, this one is uh, a smaller allocation with the uh, Great Lake uh, Consortium. And it's very focused, and, and we have been focusing on making our model more uh, parallel and, and up to date with the current architectures. So um, our model is a fairly complicated uh, MHD model. It can solve various forms of MHD hydrodynamics equations, and it can uh, do it on uh, block adaptive grids, uh, which look something like this. So each block has the same size uh, in number of cells, but it has different physical size, and also it can be on a spherical or stretched grid. We have various solvers, uh, and we have high order schemes, we have implicit and explicit time stepping, so it's not a simple code. And it's been uh, scaling quite well just with pure MPI, and for that reason we have been kind of postponing the uh, making any progress um, with uh, either uh, OpenMP or, or GPU parallelization. But to achieve this kind of scaling up to uh, about 260,000 cores, we kind of have to use really big blocks, and I will explain why. And so we are talking about a code which has been used for many different applications, for uh, space physics mostly, but also for high energy density plasma physics. And it's about 250,000 lines of Fortran 90 uh, with MPI. So we've been kind of worried about how much work it would be to add anything substantial uh, to the parallelization. But why did we uh, choose OpenMP? Uh, because we have some memory usage which, which is replicated, the grid structure. And so if we have a really large grid, then this tree uh, is already going to use most of the memory, and we cannot scale beyond a certain number of cores. We can also have, for example, some lookup table, which is a static uh, information. There is really no point of repeating it for each MPI process if it's running on the same uh, node. So again, there is a limit how big these lookup tables can be if you use just MPI. Uh, if you use OpenMP, then we will have fewer MPI processes, and then we can use uh, the cores by multithreading. Um, and then what we hope to achieve, that we can use smaller blocks, essentially larger trees, or scaling to larger number of cores, and not lose too much speed. There are two possible ways to do this. One is, uh, for our grid, is a fine-grained uh, multithreading, which would be parallelization over the cells, or a coarse grain, which is parallelization over the blocks. Now, that only works if you have a block-based uh, grid, but actually our block-based grid uh, has uh, benefited us in many, many ways, not just by adaptation, but by algorithmic design. And again, we find that that's probably the right way to go. So we have fewer loops to be parallelized. We have more work involved, because as we loop through the blocks, we do everything, not only working on cells, but we do other uh, computations. And the, the drawback is that there are many, many variables involved in these loops. We do essentially everything uh, uh, multi-threaded now. That means we have to find these uh, variables and anything that in, in OpenMP, anything that's a module variable, a saved variable, or an initialized variable is assumed to, to be shared. But in our case, most of the time, or a lot of these are not shared and we have to find them. And so we have a lot, lots of race conditions, because if we forget about them, then they get updated by the different threads, and the threads simply choose the last available value, and that's not good. And essentially, the code runs just gives wrong results, and that's not very easy to find. And so we search for a lot of tools, and the only one that actually provided useful information and was helpful was the Intel Inspector. I'm not going to say what the others were, because that would be negative advertisement, but that didn't work. 
So what are the code changes? Uh, we had to add a lot of thread private instructions. We had to make sure that when we allocate these arrays, we do this in all the threads. So that's relatively straightforward. Of course, you have to find these variables. Uh, we had to add OMP parallel regions. So this is actually the main loop of our code with some simplification. Uh, so it fits on a slide. And essentially, we do everything here. We calculate face values, fluxes, source terms, update the state, calculate the time step for the next step. And then there is this thing here, exchange messages. That's the MPI uh, message passing, uh, which is, of course, outside this loop. <coughs> uh, sorry, outside the OpenMP parallel region. And we saw that that's relatively fast, also clearly at some point that will not be uh, good. And so this is the kind of scaling we got without uh, touching the message passing, uh, which is up to here. This is the uh, pure MPI. And then if we use 16 threads, then we are on this curve. And if we use 32 threads, we are on this curve. And this would be ideal scaling. So this is a linear plot, so we lose something like 50% uh, uh, speed, but we can scale to much larger number, of course. So we are here at 125,000. Uh, then we worked a little bit on this uh, message passing, and so now after that, things look better. Um, we essentially realized that we can do the local copying of ghost cells uh, with multi-threading. The MPI is still serial, but that actually turns out to improve the performance substantially. Okay, and then sometimes we have loops where we actually have to do more than just adding directives. For example, here we have to calculate this initial point in the linear array. For This is for the implicit solver for each thread separately. We cannot rely on just keep adding up n, but that's actually a simple thing. But Again, we are talking about 250,000 lines of code, so everything matters. Um, but these were essentially the changes we had to make. So in the end, uh, we only had to add about 600 OpenMP directives, mostly thread private declarations, which is really much less than what I was anticipating. Uh, then we spent most of the time on finding the race condition and other issues. Uh, of course, uh, profiling was very important to find which parts of the code are still uh, the bottlenecks and need multi-threading. Um, and we also discovered, to our surprise, that some compilers get slow just because you compile them with OpenMP. Uh, we use NAC4 for debugging uh, because it's a good uh, for that, but then th that runs like 10 times slower, but that doesn't matter because we don't use it for pr production. But for example, the Portland group Fortran is three times slower than without OpenMP. I4 is two times slower than OpenMP. That means that you haven't even started multi-threading. You, you already lost a factor of three or two. That's not really good. Uh, G Fortran and K Cray Fortran seem to be not affected by OpenMP. Um, the other thing we kind of realized how not obvious it is uh, to set up an open MP MPI run. Every platform is different. Every compiler is different. Even versions from versions to compiler change how you have to set it up. It's environment variables passing all kinds of arguments to the uh, job submission. So it's, and, and what's on the web pages is often incomplete and obsolete. So what worked best was to actually check what's happening. So we found this C++ code, which reports back which thread is running on which core and which MPI process. And that, that told us whether we succeeded to distribute the workload as we expect or whether it's not doing what we expect. Okay, so this is kind of the result. This is on a, a MHD problem, 3D uh, small blocks. These are the typical blocks we would use. A uh, fairly large number of cells per core. And this is with GFortran optimization, and then we add OpenMP and MPI. We run it on the uh, 32 core 
uh, nodes of uh, blue waters uh, with two gigabytes per memory. So with uh, one thread we get up to here, about 16,000 cores, and with 16 or 30 through two threads here. And this looks kind of like nothing special. Now if you look at the same thing on a linear plot, it's actually much more impressive. So this is what you get with MPI, and this is what you get with OpenMP. So you can really get like 30 times larger problems <clears throat> and only lose maybe 50% or even less, 25% of the performance. Uh, obviously, when you go to 32 threads, we use the two uh, slots of the node, so then there is communication between them. So, so this drop is uh, hardware related. This is simply OpenMP is not perfect, but it's pretty good. And this extends not only to the explicit, but also to the implicit uh, solver. And we uh, managed to make this implicit solver work up to 250,000 cores, uh, which is, I think, pretty large. And, and the scaling is uh, very acceptable. <clears throat> so why, how did we benefit from Blue Water? So this was really an algorithm uh, uh, development work rather than uh, application. So we had access to large number of cores. Uh, we have a uh, large number of uh, nodes, so we can really scale up. And we notice things like we run out of integer representation, for example, uh, which we wouldn't notice if we run on smaller machines. Uh, we had a variety of uh, compilers to work with, so we, can, we could uh, work around these issues, and we had good profilers, and also we can actually do these uh, scaling runs in a finite time. On most machines, you submit something with 10,000 uh, cores and then, or, or, or 20,000, and then it takes forever to start. So Blue Waters is has a really nice uh, work environment. So in summary, uh, we succeeded uh, adding OpenMP parallelization to the Betsaras code. Now, pretty much all our nightly testing is done with OpenMP, uh, we use this coarse grain parallelization. Uh, our maximum problem size increased by a factor of essential number of threads, 32 in, on this machine. Uh, and we got good weak scaling. Uh, we found some compiler and platform specific issues. And so the future work is <clears throat> to uh, use OpenMP in the space weather modeling framework. So Betsaros is part of that. Uh, it should be relatively straightforward. Uh, we, we just want to uh, generalize it so it can use for some models OpenMP and for the others MP, just pure MPI. And then maybe in the future, or we hope so, we can use GPUs as well. Thank you. <laughs>